Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, or evening if that's uh, the case for you at this time. Okay, so today we're going to talk about how rocks form. This is going to be a really brief lecture, so just kind of bear with me and strap on your jet pads, because here we go. The best way to define a rock is to say that it is an indefinite mixture of naturally occurring substances, which are mainly minerals. It is its composition can vary in the containment of minerals and organic substances and are never exact. They can range from tiny microscopic grains of minerals or organic substances to coarse conglomerations of different minerals where the individual minerals can be easily discernible or seen. They may range in size from tiny pebbles to huge mountains and rocks may make up much of the Earth's crust. Many rocks are not solid such as magma, soil, and clay, but they're still considered rocks. Rocks can be classified according to their origin or how they were formed. The name applied to a rock depends upon how the rock was formed. Igneous rocks form from the cooling of magma. Metamorphic rocks form from the alteration from pressure or heat or both. And sedimentary rocks form from the cemented sediments in ocean floors, lake beds, wind areas, etc. The Earth has a limited supply of solid rock material that is constantly changing from one form to the other. The rock cycle provides a useful model of these changes. This diagram illustrates a different type of rock cycle in which you can see the processes that take place primarily at the surface of the earth, also known as external processes, and separate from the ones that take place within the earth or internal or subsurface processes. Internal processes, such as compression and heating, require the conditions of high temperature and pressure that can only occur naturally deep underground. The rock cycle illustrates several important facts about geology. First of all, that nearly all rocks are formed from other rocks. Coal and other sedimentary rocks of organic origins are the exceptions to that rule. And also, through the processes shown outside of the circle, rocks of one type are changed to rocks of another type. For example, sedimentary rock can be weathered, eroded, deposited, and cemented to form new sedimentary rock. It can be changed into metamorphic rock by heating, crystal growth, and the formation of new minerals, and sedimentary rock can be melted, crystallized, to form igneous rock. Similarly, there's more than one path through the rock cycle. The arrows, arrows show that igneous rock can not only undergo weathering, erosion, and deposition to make sediment, but it can also be changed by heating crystal growth and the formation of new minerals to make a metamorphic rock. Alternatively, it can also be remelted to make molten rock, known as magma, within the earth and lava at the surface of the earth and form another uh, igneous rock. Finally, metamorphic rock can be melted and crystallized to become igneous, or weathered, eroded, and cemented into sedimentary rock, but it can also be further altered by heat and pressure into a new type of metamorphic rock. Be sure that you can understand this diagram fully and are able to define the key words on this diagram. Understanding it does not mean memorizing it. Please don't try and do that, but do understand what's going on on this diagram. Each rock can remain relatively stable for long periods of time. Changes from one rock type to another may require thousands or even millions of years. Sometimes a rock can show evidence of more than one process of origin like you see in the picture here. This is a conglomerate, and it can be composed of cemented fragments from granite, which is in here, which is a type of igneous rock, and gneiss, which is a type of metamorphic rock. Although conglomerate is a sedimentary rock, some of the rock fragments within it can be non-sedimentary in origin. Most of the land areas on Earth are covered by a thin layer of sedimentary rocks. Igneous, or, uh, igneous rocks are common within and around volcanoes and where rock once buried and melted deep within the earth has been pushed up and exposed at the surface by erosion. Basalt's a great example of that. Metamorphic rocks are found in transition zones between igneous and sedimentary rocks as well as in mountainous areas where rock has been pushed up from deep within the earth. So in Idaho, which is part of the Intermountain West, we're part of the Cordillera chain. 
that means that the vast majority of rocks that you are going to find in Idaho are all, all either metamorphic or igneous in origin. Um, especially in the south, in the Snake River Plain, you have almost entirely igneous rocks. About the only place you're really going to see sedimentary rocks is some of the areas that are much, much older, um, especially over toward the Wyoming Basin where you get some of those sedimentary rocks from the previous inter, uh, intercontinental sea that used to be there. Or you'll find them in areas where there's been a long-term riverbed, like near Lewiston, for example. Okay, so that is the brief review of rocks, how they form, and some of the basic processes that happen. Make sure that you review the uh, rock cycle, and if you have any questions, of course, standard offers apply of office hours or email. Have a great day.